in a thoughtful manner right. because it needs to be thought out. It, that's, it's not random or, or you know, um, it, it, we, there is some thought process that has to go into it. And so uh, I, I put together a little bit of a, a kind of a program in so much as um, we all have needs mm -hmm. and needs are requirements, but we also have wants and wants are desires. We need to realize that needs and wants are not the same thing, but they go hand in hand. Right. And I combine those two and I say, that's what our expectations are. So if you need something and you also want that thing, it works out perfectly because the, the energy that you're putting out and the resources you're using are beneficial. You're getting what you want and what you need. And that's wonderful. Right. And that's, and that's good expectations. And that starts with yourself. What do you need? What do you want? Then it goes to what does the other person need and what do they want? And then how the two of you come together in the relationship. What does the relationship then need and right. want? So um, the problem then is, okay, suppose you need something, but you don't want it. You need to eat your vegetables, but you don't want to eat your vegetables. Right. Right. You get frustrated. You feel I'm having to do something against my will, your right. will being your want, your desire. And, and, and so that's really difficult. Um, the other part is, okay, so what happens if you want something that you don't need? Well, now you're, you're spending a lot of energy and not getting anything that's beneficial. You're living in a fantasy land yeah. and you're, you're doing all these things, but you're, you're not getting your needs met. And so there again, you feel empty. You feel hollow. You're like, well, I have everything that I want. I have the mansion. I have the vacations. It's all what I wanted. But I don't, I don't feel fulfilled. Why not? Well, because your needs aren't met. That's yeah. why. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, the, the needs and the wants co combine to create an expectation that you have mm -hmm. about yourself yeah. and about others. And then, like I say, about whatever the relationship is that, that you're trying to have. Yes. And I think that that's such a good point about needs versus wants and, and combining to expectations, because sometimes we have those things randomly and they might show up as in a, like, I felt like for myself, they show up maybe as in a different way. Like I don't, it shows up maybe in when it's lacking, when I have an expectation, but the expectation isn't met, but I haven't actually identified that it was an expectation. You know, it was something that just happened and I'm like, well, wait, that's not what I wanted. But that's just it. So it, 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 there again, if you don't know what you need or right. what you want, then your expectations can never be met. Right. You know, you're, you're just uh, flailing. Yes. Um, it, it, you know, people try to separate the, the journey from the destination. My thing is you're not on a journey if you don't have a destination. Right. Because then you're just, you know, aimlessly moving about. So it's like you have to have a target and you have to be working towards it. Now, Again, it's not really strict as to how you get there. And hey, yeah. you're allowed to stop along the way and smell the roses and, um, you know, take your time, take detours. But still, you get back on your journey to your destination. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, like, like you're saying, you know, yeah, if, if you're if you don't. Here's the other thing, too. Uh, I'll, I'll use math. It, it, if if you come to me and say, what's two plus two, or, or if you say, is two plus two 16? And I say, no, I haven't gotten you any closer to two plus two being four. Two plus two could equal 24 or 32 or anything else. So when we focus on what we don't want, mm -hmm. we aren't focusing on what we do want. And there's, there's one thing we want, and there's an infinite number of things we don't want. So that list is really long. We could spend yeah. eternity going through all the things we don't want. And yet we focus on that, right? We yeah, focus we on, do. oh, I didn't want that. Okay. So what'd you want? Well, I don't know, but I'm not going to answer that. But I know question. I don't want that. Yeah, I but know. I, I don't exactly. Want I just know I don't want that. So I'm going to bounce to the next relationship and figure out what else I don't want. Wow. Or, or maybe thinking. that person will bring the thing that I can't identify in this moment or, you know, something. As, you, if, yeah. as if someone's going to know what you need and what you <laughs> want better than you. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Who knows you better than you. And you're hoping that this external source is going to be like magically give you what it's you need. Fix. Yeah, I know. I know. I trust me. I've I spent years in that mindset and I'm like, what am I doing? Like one time I was like, I got to get a grip on myself with this, you know, like, what am I doing? And so healthy relationships 
obviously are important for our well-being. And this is, I know, one of your focuses with the app and with the book. So in your research, in your experience, how do you define a healthy relationship? Well, there again, so it, it starts by defining what you need yeah. and what you want. Um, because you, you can't even define yourself yet at that point without knowing those. And then being honest. Um, like yeah. I said, so one of the things about yeah, learning um, about the relationships and, and really looking into it and, and analyzing is you have to be honest. I had to be honest with myself. Yeah, right. I had to say, you know, okay, dude, you really screwed that one up. I mean, but of course I looked in good and I was like, well, I didn't have good data, good information. Yeah. So I, I couldn't possibly have figured out that two plus two equaled four uh, without anyone guiding me or teaching me or helping me in any way. And, right. and so, um, but yeah, you, you have to look inward and start there as to what you need and what you want. And then um, you have to be honest with the other person as to what they need and what they want. You have to ask those questions. Um, too often they're, we're, we're blinded by the fantasy, the yeah. rom-coms. Um, that's, that's where I learned all the wrong things to do in relationships yeah. because there is no <laughs> one teaching it, right? I mean, we spend, we spend 12 years you know, in school learning two plus two equals four, how to read, how to write, science. And you don't spend one day learning about relationships, how right. to, how, what about introspection, how to think about what, what you need and why you need it, how you've come to need it. And that's another one too, is um, people focus on the what, mm -hmm. on, on what's going on. Yeah. And, um, and, and they don't understand the why and the how. And, and so like, uh, if I ask you the question, you know, you, you're sitting in um, a restaurant and you see a, a, a woman starts crying. What's your first thought? What comes to mind? She's sad. She's something what got bad news, whatever, right? And she just found out that she got pregnant after having tried for three years. You yeah. missed the mark 100%. Yeah. Um, I was telling that um, I'd broken my wrist rollerblading and uh, I was the physical therapist and I were talking and I was saying that to her and she said, oh, I got a letter from Harvard and I got accepted. She's like, that would bring tears of joy to my eyes. And I said, you see, we're focusing so much on what is going on and we assume we know why and how. Right. And we never ask those questions. Why are you crying? How did you come to this? Because I'll figure out the what easily enough. Right. We are not taught to question the why and the how. And we don't question ourselves. Why do I believe what I believe? How did I come to this? Well, because my parents, I watched them and they did not have a healthy relationship. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, so what I learned was not healthy. Um, I, I watched rom-coms and, and movies and shows and all these things, which again, show you a very um, unrealistic view right, right. of the world. So I, what I was learning was very wrong. And uh, on another aside, you watch a 30 second commercial and they have a disclaimer at the bottom. You know, they show a car flying from building to building and they actually have to put a disclaimer. Cars cannot fly. Like, really? Right. You have right. to tell me that? Right. And you'll, you'll watch an hour and a half long movie that is just totally insane. Uh, you know, and nowhere, not from start to finish, do they flash up, hey, dude, this is never going to happen. Some, <laughs> some person who, again, is projecting their fantasy of what they would love life to be has written this down and some other idiot who thought it was a good idea spent money they they searched the world and found a woman who looks a certain way to, to tug at your heartstrings and a guy who acts a certain way and here you are believing this is what life is supposed to be dude not even close. Right. And then you're mad when your life isn't that way. And it's, it's like setting, as you said, setting us up for failure and yes. back on, on healthy relationships. One thing I learned very recently, actually, in my current relationship was how to ask for what I want, because yes. that was something that I never felt comfortable doing. I always, not always, but for the majority 
took what was there and assumed that was all I could have. I didn't know that I could ask for more. And well, well, there, there again, if you don't know your needs and your wants, what, what you can't even ask. Right, them. because you so don't know. Exactly. You start with you saying, I have certain wants that I need and I have certain desires, things that I want. And so I, I have to really be aware of those. And yeah, I do kind of suggest that people write those down. Yeah, for sure. We talk about that all the time on this show. And even what you're talking about with with those stories. I mean, I, I talk about this nearly every episode about the stories we tell ourselves. And it's no different in relationships, right? Like you were saying, the woman who's crying or you see something, we see the what. But then all the other stuff that we're that's going on in our mind about that, those are stories that we're telling ourselves. And until yeah. we can learn to recognize those for what they are and and be willing to communicate about them, it, you know, and that's one thing that yeah. I'll, I'll say to my boyfriend, I'll say, well, here's the story I'm telling myself about this. Is this true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And yes, 99.99% of that. No, my story is not exactly. anywhere near to what's going on because I don't I have all the information, but I think that I do in that moment and I don't. And that's why, yeah. It, one of the, the great things that, um, about talking to people is to always ask them to, in their own words, say back to you yeah. what you said to them. What yeah. did you hear me say? What right. do you think I'm saying? Um, because we have no idea how people are interpreting uh, the situation and what their right. the baggage they're bringing. Yes. So like you say, I just showed you that not only are you wrong about the woman crying, you are diametrically opposed. You're, you're 100%, 180 degrees out of phase. So what I'm pointing out to you is that when we see things, it it can be the complete opposite, not yeah. just different, but literally the opposite of what you're imagining is going yes. on. And, 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 and that's really like hard to believe in, in the it, beginning. I it's totally like, agree. What? I know. Um, I, and I talk about that a lot on here about how even to this day, nearly every day, I'll remind myself that my thoughts aren't true. Yes. And I still every day am shocked by that when I remind myself <laughs> that. You know, and it, it, after all this time, I still, there's, we just have, you know, we believe our thoughts are true and yeah. oh, here, here's not. another funny one. So um, I just wrote an article, hasn't been published yet, but um, uh, one of the things I was, I was talking about, uh, cause they're like, oh no, I guess this one just was published about um, how do you know, you know, that it's time to end a relationship or whatever. And, yeah. and I was like, I started out with, how do you know anything? And here's the thing, you don't know yourself. And I said, let, let me explain to you. When I was 16, I remember overhearing a conversation that uh, my, my parents were having with a friend of theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd been cheated on. At 16, my thought was, <laughs> get a divorce, move on, yeah. dude. Yeah. Okay, 10 years later, when it happened to me, I, oh no, oh no, it's not that at all. Right. And, and, and you realize that you don't know yourself. You tell yourself these lies of uh, this is who I am and this is how I'm going to act or react in the situation because you don't have all the information of right. uh, the reality of what that situation carries. And then suddenly you find yourself in the situation. And this is where this idea of do as I say, not as I do. I know that seems really horrible and people are like, oh, you're such a hypocrite. But no, what happens is I really believe that I would have done that until I found myself in that situation. And I'm like, I, I just can't, I, you know, it's, well, it's and you're a different hard. person. Right. And also when we think of these things, we're thinking of them in our current state yes. where we are currently, right. Yes. We change, we grow, we have different experiences, our, our outlook changes, all this stuff. So we think in a moment we would do this if this happened, but in your case, like 10, cause I read about that in your book and I, I, I can, I can feel that w within myself in situations where I've said, Oh, I would do this thing, but then the thing happens. And I'm like, well, no, actually I don't want to do that. Or that's not, there's other possibilities in this moment that I, I don't know of, you know, all of these other well, factors. Exactly. All these things you you've learned about exactly. You don't want to be the same person you were yesterday because right. you stopped growing and you stopped right. learning. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I'm not five. I'm so glad I'm not that 16 year old. Yeah. You know, this comedian I had watched once said that um, when he was 20, he thought, man, I'm so smart now. Yeah. And then when he was 25 on that birthday, he was like, man, I'm so much smarter than I was when I was 20. I, was, I wasn't as smart as I thought. Finally, when he was 30, he was like, oh, I'm so much smarter when I was 20 than when I was 25. It's like, dude, hopefully you're always getting smarter and you're right. never, you never stop because that's that's growing. And, and it's this learning. And so, yeah, um, 
like you say, the, the things that I had thought when I was 16, I was very limited, of course, in, in what I knew about the 